Now before we start part B, I just want to update the diagram because in part A we found this acceleration to be four thirds of a meter per second per second. So I'll update the diagram there. Now we've got to find out the coefficient of friction then for part B and to do that what I need to do is start to add some forces on the diagram. So what forces have we got? Well, we've certainly got the weights of the two particles P and Q so we can put those in. So for P we've got a weight then of 2G newtons acting downwards and because this is on a horizontal plane there'll be a reaction upwards okay from the surface which I'll call RP if you like and RP will be exactly the same as the weight downwards so it'd be 2G newtons okay the same applies here with Q we'll have the weight of Q acting downwards so that's going to be 3G newtons and there'll be a reaction upwards which I'll call RQ and RQ because it's on a horizontal plane here will be equal to the weight so that'll be 3G newtons now there's friction acting on both of these particles because we're on a rough surface and friction opposes motion and since the particles are moving towards the right friction will move or be uh, in the direction to the left so I'll mark that in okay as friction is acting in that direction for both particles okay now we know that friction, or should know that friction, is equal to mu times r, the normal reaction, because these particles are moving. So it's in, it's it's reached its limits. So that's mu r. So for p, this one is going to be mu times r, which is now 2g. So mu 2g or 2g mu newtons, and for particle Q, the friction here would be mu r, and r is 3g newtons, so that's mu 3g newtons. Okay. There'll also be tension in the string that's connecting the two particles. So the tension on Q is acting back in this direction, that will be t newtons, and on P the tension will be equal and opposite in this direction so that would be T newtons. So that is all the forces that all the forces are represented on the diagram now. So that's quite a lot of work so uh, make sure that you've got something like that. Now if I resolve to the right okay basically applying force equals mass times acceleration what I've got is that the F is 30 newtons acts to the right and then I've got the frictional force here of minus mu 3g minus because it's acting to the left so that's minus mu 3g then I've got the minus t here and then I've got on this particle plus t and then I've got minus mu 2g because it acts in the opposite direction to what I'm taking as plus so that's minus mu 2g and that's all the forces taken into account that's the resultant force acting to the right and that is making the total mass here of 5 kilograms accelerate with an acceleration of 4 thirds of a meter per second per second so I need to multiply that by 4 thirds okay so we have the overall force equals mass times acceleration now these T's cancel some of you would have known that most probably before you start that these are internal forces and you don't really need to put them into the equation because they cancel but there you are it just shows you that they do cancel
So, cleaning this up, okay, I could multiply through by 3, for instance, and I would have 30 times 3, which would give 90. Remember now I could group these two terms up, so that's minus 5 mu g, but I'm timesing by 3, so that becomes minus 15 mu g. Okay. And timesing this term by 3 gives me 20. So rearranging this, adding 15 mu g to both sides and also subtracting 20 from both sides would give me 90 minus 20, which is 70, and adding the 15 mu g to the other side gives 15 mu g. So all I need to do now to get mu, the coefficient of friction, is to divide both sides by 15 g. So I get mu equals 70 over 15 g. And if I work that out, it comes to exactly 10 over 21. Or as a decimal, you need to round it up, you get 0 0.476 given to three significant figures. Okay? I much prefer this version though because it's the exact value as opposed to this version which is the approximate value. Okay, so that brings us to the end then of 8 part B.